Hello everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Michal, I'm the VP of Marketing at Macrofab. Um, I still see quite a few people joining us, so we'll, we'll give everyone a couple minutes before we get started. Um, All right, I think I think we have um, quite a few amount of people who have already joined us. Um, without any delays, we'll we'll get started. So um, again, um, appreciate everyone um, joining us for the webinar. Um, you know, we have been doing the series of webinars for quite a bit. Um, you know, surprisingly, a lot of these webinars have been focused on supply chain challenges that um, you know. A lot of different people, a lot of different industries have been facing. And um, through these webinar series, what we try to do is uh, help uh, our audiences out with uh, tips, tricks, strategies that they can keep in mind when they're trying to deal with these supply chain challenges. In that same series and same way um, is, is today's webinar. We have been receiving a lot of questions here at Macrofab uh, around uh, sourcing issues, supply chain issues that they have been uh, our our customers, our prospects have been facing, and and how to deal with those issues. Um, you know, initially when supply chain issues started, most of it was attributed to um, COVID and how pandemic was causing an issue. But we are way beyond that, and there are so many different reasons why we are having the supply chain challenges. So, um, you know, today Cody Cody is our um, head of um, strategic sourcing. Um, he has been doing this for more than 10 years now um, he's gonna he's gonna walk through you know different uh, reasons why we are facing the supply chain challenges walk you guys through um, things to keep in mind right and these are times where we are getting desperate in a way to to find components and buy components that, um, you know in any way or form we can but but what are the things we need to keep in mind and to buy um, you know genuine parts and then tools that you can use um, um, you know, when, when you're thinking about, um, uh, you know, your sourcing strategies and stuff. So without any further delay, I'm going to hand it over to Cody. Uh, Cody, take it over. 
Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, everybody, for joining today. Um, so, uh, as Michelle mentioned, I um, I come from the industry uh, on the distribution side. So, I've worked for many independent distributors in the industry, um, and uh, I have a lot of insight as to uh, you know how parts move around globally, as well as the risks associated with procuring parts outside of uh, our usual channels, the authorized and franchised um, uh, distribution. So uh, I have um, uh, primarily uh, experience uh, sourcing board level uh, components and commodity components, um, you know, uh, uh, CPUs, SSDs, uh, finished goods as well. So, um, but uh, what, what we're look, looking at, if you can go to the next, uh, uh, slide, uh, Michelle, is um, so for the agenda for this for this webinar is really to come away with some 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 key takeaways, which are what are the disruptions that associate with um, supply chain shortages? Um, what are the risks associated with supply chain uh, shortages and disruptions? And what are some of the tools and strategies um, that are really working for, for MacroFab and for our customers? Um, we're not here to say that there's, this, is, this is the only way to do it. Uh, we're aware that there are many different paths to the top of the mountain. This just seems to be the path that has provided the least resistance and the most success for us and our customers. So um, we can go ahead into the next slide here. Um, yeah, uh, just, just one thing I want to remind our uh, listeners, there is a question panel um, in your GoToWebinar um, uh, panel. Throughout the webinar, please feel free to ask us questions. And this is supposed to be interactive. Um, you know, Cody, as I said, has a lot of experience in this area. So any type of questions around sourcing and supply chain challenges you guys are facing at your organization, feel free to type it in the panel and we'll take questions throughout the webinar. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Michelle. <clears throat> so uh, if we'll go over to the next slide, you can see this is just an example. So what what is what is the effect of um, because obviously the 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 major issue, one of the most uh, prevalent issues in the shortage is counterfeit parts, right? And counterfeit parts being introduced into the market. And uh, so how does that look like? More recently, um, Sensible Micro uh, put this information out. It is estimated that. $250 billion annually um, are, uh, uh, are cost of, cost of is, is, is the global cost of counterfeit goods, which is projected to represent almost a trillion dollar global economy by 20, this year. So, I mean, it's a rampant problem. Uh, counterfeit didn't just show up during the shortage. Uh, the good news here is that um, this this is a major shortage as we all see it, right? Everybody knows that there's a shortage, uh, but it's important to realize that an out of stock, long lead time, obsolescence, end of life market has always existed, right? It's just majorly prevalent right now. So we're going to get into what are some of those strategies and tools uh, that you can use to combat that, um, you know, volatility in the supply chain. But how do we recognize what that volatility is, right? If you'll um, go to the next slide, um, Michelle. So what are the disruptions? Part life cycle, parts going end of life, um, you know, parts, uh, you know, a, a particular constraint on a part or uh, of, of changes in demand, higher demand for specific part may shorten that supply. Um, the, the supply itself from the OCM, the original component manufacturer, um, you know, may be delayed in and of itself, uh, pushing parts to mainline distribution. Um, and or is it is it a geopolitical uh, inconsistency or uh, volatility rather that's that's putting a constraint on some of the raw materials that are necessity to, to manufacture uh, these, these you know, commonly used board level components. Um, 
and we see the we see the effect, you know, from the from the raw materials standpoint on the timeline, through the supply chain and distribution, uh, all the all the way down to the customer. So it's it's really about having an understanding of how do parts travel into the market, um, w which is uh, which is imperative when you're making a decision on how to go about sourcing those those parts, right? So. Um, not so sure. in, in the current scenario, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's very easy to just talk about you know, geopolitical issues, the pandemic, um, sure. and whatnot. Supply chain issue has existed for quite a bit. Right? It has yeah. become a big, um, bigger issue in the past couple of years. Uh, when you are talking to our prospects and you are talking to our existing customers, um, what is it that that you are seeing? Like what beyond just the the assumed factors are we seeing issues with the raw materials we seeing you know the components are there it's just a matter of reaching to you on time like what is it that according to you is is really the issue right now so so really it's um it's it's understanding how to navigate um the volatile market of authorized distribution having zero stock right so it's it's having to operate outside of traditional franchised and authorized distribution channels uh which leads to kind of the open market i guess you'd say uh which is where you'll find the brokers independent distributors and so what we're really seeing is kind of a a, a, a collective shift from a lot of our customers to, to, to utilize a strategic sourcing partner, partner, in this case, Macrofab, to not only secure the supply that they need to keep production going currently, but to also develop um, you know, a, a preventative maintenance system so that in the future, uh, issues are recognized before they become problems. And uh, there can be some sort of a de developmental, um, a, a proactive, approach to the supply chain versus this reactive um, approach to the to the shortage and the volatility right uh, cody there is a, there is a question and it's very pertaining to what you were talking about so i'm just going to read it out to you mm -hmm. um comment is certainly some companies have purchased more components than they need um you know we all we all know um uh, is there a certified method to put these excess parts back into normal distribution for electronics components I think that's very interesting. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, no, it's a really good question. And so those those parts do circulate in in the open market. Uh, very rarely you'll see um, you know parts making their way back into distribution, uh, authorized or franchise distribution once they've been uh, uh, sold outside of it. However, that that that's the understanding of you know that we have to have a you know a lot of people don't get is where do these parts come from in the open market how, how, how do these brokers or independent distributors come upon this stock and it's and that's that really is the case is what you just said you know these these distributors have established relationships with their customers who are large oems maybe mid-sized oems uh that may place orders for a xilinx chip for 50,000 pieces with an understanding that 25,000 is realistic uh, uh, use for production and maybe a 5,000 piece overage. But those 20,000 pieces are, are allotted to the open market. And um, that a lot of times is, is why you're, you're, when you're a buyer and you're receiving these, these offers for parts, the broker or, or distributor will uh, signify on there, this is OEM excess um and and so that that's a lot of the time how it re-enters the market is through the broker, there, the broker system so, so more around is there a certified process like is there a are are these brokers um and i think you had mentioned a, a bunch of these in, in one of our webinars do mm -hmm. these guys have a have a process in place or is it pretty ad hoc at this point where you have access you call one of these you know open market distributors and they're like let's talk there is no real process it's you know come to the table and we'll see what needs to be done i mean it's 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 all situation based right because what is the what is the facilitation that needs to happen is it to put a short term uh solution for uh you know a, a current production problem or are there 
uh, many problems across an entire bomb where we may need to back up. And, uh, you know, one thing that, 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 that happens during all this, uh, Michelle, is it can get hectic, the, even though every, we all have a process. The buying process, the supply chain process internally can get hectic. So you, it, it, it benefits to step back again. And like, you know, when, when a customer reaches out to me for help, uh, I try to start from the beginning and, and say, how are we doing our buying? Are we running an MRP report weekly or are you running an, an MRP report daily? Are you buying project based or is there a considerable cons, you know, effort to make annual usage purchases to you know, kind of brace in case there is a short supply of you know, um, detrimental parts to your build that you want to secure? Um, there, there's a there's a, a lot of different ways to again go about making sure that you're getting out in front of the problem um, b b before you're lying down, right? So um, I'll, I'll 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 take one more question and then then we'll move to the next slide. Um, again, it's a really interesting question. So most of us assume that device lot code and traceability is required for medical, automotive, and aerospace uh, industries. What markets do you see that are paying more attention to this lately? I mean, so it's, you're right. It's always been aerospace, uh, you know, rugged military de device manufacturers. Um, it's 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 company. There's no specific industry I can tie it to. It's very much company wide, right? Um, I mean, it, it's, suffice it to say, you know, we're in a time where Procurement managers that represent branches of our military are even being forced to operate outside of authorized or franchise distribution channels. So then you have to introduce processes once you start, you know, seeking supply down these avenues. What are those processes? A, a massive concentration around QC, right? For instance, Macrofab, when we pr procure any material that is coming out of Asia, regardless of who our supplier is, uh, which we do have a built AVL specifically for our Asian vendors uh, that we don't necessarily operate outside of, there's an understanding with those vendors that nothing will be paid for up front everything passes to our partner facility in in hong kong the largest testing facility in hong kong in whitehorse laboratories nothing leaves asia without going through a test facility nothing arrives at macrofab without and now analytic test reports provided to ensure that the parts are in fact new and original um so that's one of the main you know steps that we use to ensure that we're bringing in quality material and mitigating the risk of counterfeit parts. Cody, you're essentially saying, I mean, it's it's not industry agnostic. I mean, it's industry agnostic at this point. It does not Absolutely. matter. I mean, back Absolutely. back in, in the good times, it would be okay. You know, medical automotive aerospace could um, um, were more stringent, but now we are seeing because of the amount of counterfeit parts that are out there, almost every industry is going through. Um, and paying attention to to traceability on all the other things to make sure you know you're getting the right parts um, you're buying it from reliable sources yeah absolutely and you know at the same time uh, on the opposite of that you know you have fortune uh, you have uh, supply chain managers from fortune 500 companies on the phone with their broker deciding whether or not to pull the trigger on some parts that they may have found on eBay um, you know so so it you know again it, it, it's it's all hands on deck in some cases but but for the majority we, we we see calculated steps being made which makes us feel you know a lot better about um you know where our customers are in the healthy uh or the lifeline of their uh, supply chain isn't being uh you know jeopardized by leaving themselves open for that kind of exposure so all right thanks Cody. i'll, I'll let you go forward with the r stuff Good, good yes. question. Yes, definitely. All right. So as we go on to the next slide, um, so we, we talk about risks, right? 
uh, counterfeit parts is, is obviously number one. What does that look like? Are those pulls, pulls being pulled off of a, um, of, a, of a printed circuit board and just thrown into a pile for, you know, refurbishment? Are they active, uh, you know, or have they been refurbished? Um, have they been remarked? Uh, and and, and the, the subjective testing that, w that Macrofab is, is putting all of our parts through uh, will tell us this kind of information, you know, just from a basic visual inspection. Uh, you know, black topping, you can tell if the part's been resurfaced, remarked, and as sophisticated as the counterfeiters have gotten, um, the, the testing market in the counterfeit detection has, has been pretty synonymous in meeting them every step of the way. Um, however, it's employing those additional QC measures of actually partnering with someone who tests their parts uh, to ensure that you're getting the benefits of, of, of that testing, right? Um, you know, wire fraud, there's, it's, it's rampant. You know, this is a great example here listed in this slide. Uh, recently, we had a customer, obviously we were all hands on deck for this specific part. And we were approached with a cust uh, by the customer with a prospective uh, supplier. It took 10 seconds to run that supplier through um, our, our partner ERAI to, to, to yield a report showing that over 20 different occasions, the supplier has been uh, reported for wire, wire fraud. And it, it gave a list of over 25 different organizations that were found and proven to be intertwined with this fraudulent uh, uh, business. So obviously we didn't move forward with the vendor, but it's those kind of preventative maintenance efforts that lead to avoiding production delays down the road. When we've gone through the wire, we've we've got the vendor telling us, hey, just send us the 30 grand. Well, we'll wire them the 30 grand and throw it against the wall and hope that it sticks. And then you get two weeks down the road and you have parts blowing up on boards. That's not where we want to be, right? Unfortunately, we see a lot of that in a, in a constrained market, right? Um, so it's, again, it's very important to, uh, to make sure that, um, you know, I know it's, 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 you know, monotonous, but risk, risk, risk is, is, is in quality is at the forefront of uh, whatever newly developed system you're looking to employ regarding supply chain. Um, if you wouldn't mind, Michelle, going to the next slide here. Awesome. And so tools and strategies to utilize in order to predict the risk and improve your decision making. Um, we have a few listed here. I'll talk about Octopart first. Macrofab is actually partnered with Octopart in a few different ways. And it, 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 they're, they're a fantastic resource for um, supply chain visibility into the dis authorized or franchised distribution market. Okay. Um, similar to fine chips. Uh, you know, I always tell I always, you know, tell my customers if if you if you're not on Octopart, get on Fine Chips. If you're not on Fine Chips, uh, get on Octopart. If you're not using both, use both. It can never hurt. Um, and and these are really good tools to, even even if even if they're not great tools to uh, order your out of stock parts because it's you know everybody's showing up on their DigiKey, Mauser, Avnet, Aero as out of stock. You can get really good information uh, uh, from these sites and as far as um, you know, visibility into lead times, um, or life cycle information. One that's not on here that I would highly recommend, and, and I hope all the engineers out there point their ears on this one, especially for engineers, is IHS Market. IHS Marketplace, rather. IHS is a vast data mining company um it's 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 odd because they're like the encyclopedia across many different industries and verticals but in 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 electronic components specifically they house i i, I would i would say probably from the beginning of time every part that has ever been manufactured data is is mined and, and consolidated into ihs and and you can get an abundance of information from one part in IHS, life cycle information, 
uh, distributor information, crosses or alternate information, date code information, which you know some 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 or, or data sheet information rather. You know some data sheets are you know one to three pages for a part, and it seems like that was kind of served up when a part maybe was uh, you know is a newer version of a of a of a of a root part. If you go, if you find that part in IHS, you'll get full data sheets, which will offer ordering codes that you can dig into to see what can be manipulated or, um, you know, adjusted to perhaps find an alternate for a part. Uh, it's just a very, very good resource um, that that I that I would recommend uh, looking into. Um, ERAI, hey, a lot of people have heard about ERAI. Some people don't know what it's all about. ERAI is not a requirement in the industry. However, they are the unspoken supreme authority in the electronics industry when it comes to counterfeit part um, data and um, just practices of good or bad business in the industry period. Essentially, being an ERA, my ERAI member is a badge that this contract manufacturer, this OEM, or this distributor takes quality seriously, and they take doing business, good business, seriously. ERAI provides daily alerts on customers that are short shipped, uh, that are uh, victims of wire fraud, um, that receive counterfeit parts, and in these alerts, are detailed reports of exactly what happened, who sent the counterfeit parts, what was the part, and then was there a resolution or has this gone unresolved? So it's very, very useful information. When you're looking to make it, if you're a supply chain manager trying to make a determination on a new vendor, you run them through ERAI. You see if they have a scorecard or if they have a reputation in the industry for doing good business or otherwise. Um, so Macrofab is a big proponent um, and a proud partner of uh, uh, or member of ERAI. And then, I mean, ultimately, we'd love to see, uh, you know, partner with a strategic, someone that operates in this space already, right? It, it, it's not time to reinvent the wheel when you're in the trenches, right? We have to have a battle plan prior to going in. And having a partner that operates in this space, right, in the space of obsolete parts, in the space of supply chain constraints, even with, with, without, with or without a global shortage, right, it's going to be beneficial to position yourself with companies like this because they're going to allow you to develop those preventative processes to hopefully notice and predict issues before they become problems. But should you run into any problems, you'll have the ammunition internally to navigate those uh, those channels and uh, those issues as they as they come about. Um, not sure if we have any questions or if we can roll to the next slide there, Michelle. Um, any questions uh, at all? Question, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a couple of links um, that would be helpful for our um, attendees. There is a really helpful link you spoke to spoke Cody about IHS. Um, I'm going to put the research out there as well um, um, as we go through the presentation. Um, sure. Awesome. So we just this is just going to be a quick slide. We want to cover certifications. Um, what, what has macro? I'm going to take a second here to kind of explain what have we done. Um, what what kind of sets us uh, apart from what everyone else is doing. So Macrofab's strategic sourcing team is comprised of individuals with over 50 years combined experience working for or directly with the electronic component distribution market, okay? So essentially what we've done is internalized the broker process where traditionally a group of buyers from an OEM organization would reach out to one independent distributor, let's use Smith & Associates as an example, right? Or America 2. Now let's say you have a list of 20 parts and, and you send them to your, your, your uh, account manager at your broker, right? He's your go-to guy. The reality is out of those 20 parts, Smith or America 2 may have stock on one, 
those other 19 parts are going to need to be sourced into the open market, right? Which is where different proprietary software, uh, channels, platforms, um, established vendor relationships are navigated to essentially reach the stocking distributor of whatever part it is you're looking for. So with our team having this experience in, the, in this, you know, this you know, group combined uh, uh, knowledge, we've essentially internalized the broker process to where 90% of the time when we are sourcing material for our customers, we are going directly to the stocking distributor, circumventing the broker market right? What does this do for us and our customers? Well, I'll tell you, in a world where your average markup is a 30 to 50% markup on a part, it's cutting costs. It's also saving us lead time from not having to travel through other hands. And it also allows us to keep a tighter eye on quality and how our parts move and who they come from. Um, who are these folks? They are certified vendors. What are the certifications? ISO certification, AS9120, AS6081. You know, these are vendors that service markets, um, the, the, the aerospace industry, uh, military. Um, believe me when I tell you, every major OEM to include Acer, Dell, Apple, every major CM to include Flex, Celestica, anybody, has relationships already and have for many years with open market distribution or open market distributors. Open market distribution is necessary to maintain a healthy cycle, as healthy as it can be now, uh, of supply chain in, in the global market. Um, and uh, so, so Macrofab has positioned ourselves with certified vendors that have systems and QMS uh, processes in place that ensure they're providing the best services and Macrofab is getting good material, guaranteed, new and original, um, and is uh, mitigating as much risk as, as, as possible. <clears throat> That's awesome, Cody. Um, you know, there's there is one more question out there. Uh, again, not surprising. Uh, unfortunately, the, the Ukraine-Russia conflict, is, how, is, how is that affecting the supply chain right now? What are the different issues that we are running into um, specifically due to that conflict? Right. Um, so on the supply side, we are seeing, you know, um, uh, slowdowns. We are seeing disruptions from parts that are manufactured in Russia, maybe um, you know, I know a considerable portion of the um, raw material market is being uh, affected by the inability to export um, from Russia. So it's it's affecting it's affecting the market from a, a raw material sor uh, 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 sourcing standpoint, uh, production standpoint. And, and, and now supply, we're seeing supply and demand being affected just as much because what you have are government or government associated entities placing massive orders for parts. There's builds on massive scales that are happening. So now that we're not, now we're not just fighting Apple and Ford for stock, we're fighting the US Navy for allocation. We're fighting the U.S. Air Force for allocation. We're fighting government contracted organizations for allocation. So it's it is it is putting a tighter constraint on uh, the supply chain further than just a, a simple raw material uh, standpoint. Um, it's it's affecting it on both ends. So um, yeah, that's it's straight. It's it's crazy times. It really is. Even even more important times to to get really really serious and granular in uh, you know strengthening your your uh, supply chain and processes. Yeah, I, I've been uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of our listeners um, we've been reading into that and uh, you know if it's if it's not affecting right now it is going to start affecting us you know real quick. Oh, yeah. it's, it's a sure. whole multi-level 
cycle that has been impacted as uh, so a full scale production is going to continue to keep deteriorating before it, it gets better. Um, Cody, there is there is one more question, um, more pertaining to Magrafab. You know, at, at, at what production uh, volumes does it make sense um, for a company to work with Magrafab? Um, I think I want you to answer this question basically in twofold. Um, you know, the one is overall production um, that we help people with with our factory network. But then <clears throat> more in context of this uh, webinar, and I think people who are attending this webinar, can you highlight our strategic sourcing, especially the new initiative that we have just launched? I'm gonna send a link to one of our um, product pages as well, where we are sourcing for people who are not even manufacturing with us. So we are essentially just being an outsourced um, strategic sourcing arm for a lot of companies. And you have been on the forefront of that. So I think I would I would answer it in two folds. One is, you know, how, how we help with production, but then specifically with, with sourcing and strategic sourcing, how people yeah, can sure. work with us as a standalone product. Sure. No, absolutely. So, I mean, in and of itself, to get to the traditional root of the business of Macrofab, that's what we're developed for. Um, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, the, the, the manufacturing capacity, the elasticity is such that we can facilitate NPI, proto, uh, R&D runs, and the scalability is seamless because we're already partnered with manufacturing facilities that accommodate the larger runs. Um, more specifically, larger runs specific to your vertical. Um, we're not just placing jobs into manufacturing facilities that have space. They're going into the right partner, someone that deals with your vertical. If you're making sensors for downhole in oil and gas, if you're manufacturing medical devices, if you're manufacturing a wearable, those are geared, those are teamed with specific manufacturing partners that have um, you know relevance in that in that arena. Um, so again, what we've done with the strategic sourcing aspect, right? We've, we've been able to facilitate, I, I, I don't know the number off the top of my head. I know it's well over 250 different jobs. We've, we've been able to, uh, for lack of a better rephrase, unstick, right? And move forward to production based off of a supply chain anomaly, right? We've been able to facilitate finding those parts that were 62 weeks out, out of uh, you know, uh, delivery, bring those parts in certified, tested, right? and move those jobs to production. Well over 250 jobs, I do know that for sure. Um, and, and in turn, what we found again is, is you know, in, in engaging with our customers to really find out, you know, hey, let's not just put a Band-Aid on this problem. Tell us more. How are you buying? How do you do your buying? Do you run an MRP report weekly or are you running it daily? Is this something that, you, you know, you guys are, are monitoring? across all jobs, not even what's put with Macrofab, is there anything we're able to help with? So we've had a soft opening into this, in, in, into this service, right? But it's spread like wildfire because we've now never, it's, it's, it has not nearly reached the level of inundation, right? But we are um, steadily seeing more and more customers reaching out saying, hey, look, we ran our MRP our peer report, our bombs are looking, you know, kind of suspect on a few other jobs. We haven't really turned over to Macrofab, but we'd like to utilize your services to procure this material and make sure that's not going to be an issue. Um, and yeah, and it's working really, really well. Yeah, no, Cody. I mean, I and again, it's a it's a shameless um, pitch over here, but I mean, I I, yeah. I know um, you know a lot of lot of our uh, prospects that have been reaching out to us. They you know, they, they have a manufacturing partner. They're not specifically looking for a new manufacturing partner, um, but they need help with uh, with sourcing. And that's where, you know, Cody, you and your team have been doing a phenomenal job um, helping source parts so they can continue their manufacturing. Um, okay. But on our end, you know, again, everything from prototype to full-scale production, uh, there is no real volume requirements that we have. Um, yeah, you can partner with us. Um, there is uh, another question, um, Cody, again, 
listening to Microfab. What quality certifications are used in our manufacturing processes? Um, a specific question around ISO 9001 or AS 9000, 9001000D. Gotcha. So <laughs> specificity on certifications really uh, depends on what kind of a job we're, we're what what we're go what job we're going into right is it is it a customer that again is manufacturing a medical device okay that we have partners uh, are we're going to utilize our partner facility that is AS6081 AS9120 certified in that to service specifically that medical device uh, vertical um, every partner that we utilize is ISO certified um, to 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 not exclude like I said, um, you know, ITAR certifications, um, EAR99, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, partners. It, it, it there, there's, there's no, there's no function or capacity within Macrofab or the channels that we operate in or the partners that we use that is not um, controlled in some form or fashion by these ISO regulations or uh, in, 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 you know, like I said, in certain cases, AS uh, uh, certified, uh, you know, regulated markets. So everything that everything that we do is, uh, um, you know, whether it's a, a customer needing to ensure that not only are the pot parts, um, uh, you know, Rojas compliant, um, but but that they're compliant across a specific requirement in their vertical uh we can enter some type you know in any kind of testing or certification uh that needs to, we have partners that offer those tests uh to ensure that a part is certified to go into a specific vertical um so i mean we're, we're not limited by by any type of uh certification um so I don't, I don't, yeah, just I, for the audience. Yeah, we have we have, we have a network of seventy five factories. Um, yeah, the job is done in a very specific factory um, within North America, um, and so based on based on our prospects, customers' requirements, um, we pick and choose the right uh, right factory for the right job. Um, that includes certifications. Sure, absolutely. Um, and any other any other questions from our audience? Um, be it supply chain related questions, um, sourcing, you know, we, as I said, we had done a very similar uh, webinar. Um, you know, if anyone wants to reach out to me after this webinar, I'm happy to send you guys a link to our previous one as well, where we spoke a lot about uh, sourcing tools and whatnot. Um, but happy to answer any other questions. Yes, we can move on to the next slide. I think this um, this concludes our um, presentation. Um, and Cody, anything else that you would want to let our audience know? Um, yeah. Just just main key key takeaways. Um, focusing on predicting issues before they become problems, right? And exercising tools that we talked about today. To try to mitigate those 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 issues or that exposure, and again, really focusing on partnering with with someone that operates in this space, essentially a macro fab. Um, and I do want to I do want to leave you with what with one more uh, point and 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 really an ultimate reason to partner with someone like macro fab. If 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 you if you're if you're a, uh, a purchasing manager or even a buyer who finds themselves in a situation where you're you're obviously facing a, bun, a bunch of short parts, it seems like a good idea to reach out to 20, 30 different distributors, right? Because you cast a wider net, you have a better opportunity of sourcing that part. Um, that's not necessarily how it works, and in many cases, you can end up in turn driving the price up on yourself by pinging the market in such a fashion to where now this one or two stocking distributors that actually have this material are being pinged by 15, 20, 30 different suppliers for this part, and that drives the price up. So really 
try to, to maintain a concentrated uh, uh, relationship with someone who you're sourcing your material with. Um, feel free to reach out if, if you need anything from Macrofem. We're always here to help and I uh, really appreciate everybody uh, attending today. Thank you guys very much. Yeah, guys, uh, if there are no further questions, uh, I want to appreciate everyone's time today. We have a bi-weekly webinar that we, uh, that we do, um, so keep an eye on that as well. Um, reach out to me after the webinar if you have any questions uh, about strategic sourcing in general, what MacroPap can offer. Um, more than happy to connect with you guys. Um, but thank you for your time today. Take care, everybody. Bye.